Hi there, I'm Beth, and this week's video is a collaboration with Marna from the channel Dolls Rescued. If you haven't watched her videos before, please check out the link in the description. She's a collector of many dolls and a keen seamstress too. Together with her husband Darren, they create wonderful doll accessories and they come up with such fun collaboration ideas. Well, today, Marna and I are each going to turn a Blythe doll into a mini version of ourselves. I already shared a little peek of mine in part one of my recent customizing series. I've just customized two of my first stock dolls, so this will be my third custom this month. I have her faceplate here. This is an AliExpress TBL or DBS Blythe head. Her eyes are already disassembled. I've sanded the lids and will swap out just one set of these eyes with a pair from this mega haul I just bought. Her body will be this Obitsu 24 style one. Very poseable. And you might recognise this scalp from an older video where I used the knot method on real sheep's wool. I'm a bit bored of the shocking white hair, so I plan to use real hair dyes to try to match my own colours. I first set about continuing the carving of her faceplate. Once satisfied with my carving and scraping, I carefully sand the face and give it a good wash. The face is primed with Mr. Super Clear Matte Spray. Then I begin colouring it with Pan Pastels. Once I've built up a little colour on the face, eyelids and backplate, I move on to watercolour pencils. I also use some gouache paint to dot on some freckles. I use a mirror to try to match my own face where possible. Here I've also painted on some eyeliner. I love my heavy eyeliner. <laughs> On the back plate, I'm drawing a simple picture of art supplies. I think it suits my mini me. I finish the lips and eyelids with a little gloss varnish and move on to the scalp. I found some cheap dye that looked like my own natural colour and will leave the ends white to be dyed with my purple dye. The hair dyed really well and the rubbery scalp didn't seem to get stained too much by it. I apply the purple dye then go on to make a start on her clothes. I have this green skirt from the brand Scarlet Darkness that I love to wear. It has these gathered panels, which I'm trying to copy in my miniature version. I'll hand sew them each on, then gather the waist to insert into this shaped waistband. Here we are, ready for assembly. I've put on a simple black vest, a wardrobe staple, and some funky mustard tights, which I'm also wearing. I love bright tights. 
She also has creatable world shoes and a temporary underskirt. Here's my green skirt. Love this. And another wardrobe staple, a cosy cardigan. I have a lot of cardies myself. Once I've put her together, I'll add tiny black buttons for my earplugs and a shiny silver gem for my nose stud. I make a start putting her together. And oh, here's her new hair. I did sit and curl it all, but without any product, they've all straightened out. Typical. I'll have to do it again and add some hairspray. Well, then I attached her scalp and finished closing up the head. She looks so cute. She's really different to my usual customs. Okay, let's get her dressed. Here she is, or rather, here I am. <laughs> oh, this was so much fun. It's nice to work on a girl who I get to keep, and I'm so happy to finally have a proper mini-me. My only gripe would be that the hair colour didn't come out quite like on the box, and the purple isn't quite as vibrant as I wanted either but if it really bugs me, I can always add more dye another time. Otherwise, I'm so happy with her. Here's her earplugs and nose stud. Oh, and her pool charms too. I gave her some stars, a little wooden cotton reel, and an acorn too. Here are all the different eyes. My eyes are kind of hazel. There's a little brown in the middle, some green and blue too, depending on the light. They weren't easy to match. Let's give her some accessories too. A camera, a little cat just like ours, a sketchbook and pencil of course, and a little doll of her own. Let me know if you recognise this. I just found her in a charity shop for 15p. Please be sure to check out Marna's video today. I can't wait to see her mini-me Blythe. Let me say a big thank you to all my patrons and welcome our newest member, Claire Hunter. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm really happy with how everything turned out. Wait a minute, what's that in the background? The smart dolls seem to have found some giant-sized pool rings. Maybe there's more to this collab than I first thought. Our lovely Blythes have gone to all this effort to look like us, so how about we make a little effort to look like them too? Our 3D printed Blythe rings are people-sized. Yes, this means we can add our own pool cord. Here I am with my mini-me, wearing the same outfit not a bad match. Oh, yes, here's my own pull cord. I think I need some more practice doing the eye change, but don't you love this idea? With a scaled up pull ring, we can dress up as our Blythe dolls for Halloween. You can probably tell my pull ring is attached to the back of my head. I simply tied the cord onto an empty barrette style hair clip and clipped it to my hair above a little ponytail. I've had so much fun with this project. I've only seen a sneak peek of Marna's pull ring so far, but I'm delighted to tell you that if you want one of your own from either of us, they will be available to buy. Make sure you check out Marna's video to find out where to purchase their design. They are based in the US, so that may be the best option for many of you. I plan to bring mine with me to BlytheCon UK on October the 7th, 
where you could buy one in person, and after that I will list them in our shop at bethramsden.com for sale. Be sure to check back then to see which colours are available. Even if you're not dressing up, they make a fantastic decoration for any Blythe lover. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Comment, like and subscribe if you did. Check out Marna's video linked in the description below and take care. I'll see you again soon. Bye!